You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline connects you with experts from all over the world to help you take charge of your career, your business, and your life. Wrap along with us. Visit drjacqueline.com to learn how to become a guest or a sponsor. And now, the doctor is in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you're joining us from. We are so happy to have you. This is our second program for today, Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline, the underdog show starring Ben Chai. Let's bring out my co-host, the Dr. Who of business. Hello, Dr. Who. Hi, how are things, Dr. J? Things are really picking up. I'm standing up instead of sitting. What do you think of that? Uh, that's great. I always think standing up's uh, much better. Uh, it, it, it actually is. A lot of people get back problems due to sitting down so much on their computer system. So it's uh, it'll help you a lot. Everyone should stand up more. Stand up. Oh, and, yes. Stand up. And I feel like you and I together are dressed to go to some formal event. Oh, where are you taking me? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking London sounds like a great place. You're already there. I, I just had a show with a guest from London, and it seems like there's a lot of excitement over in the UK in general. A lot of things going on that are uh, starting to open up there, yes? Uh, there's always exciting things in London, even when it's locked down. Well, they've got you there, so you're you're quite a bright light in the world. That's very kind of you. We have lots of many bright lights. You, you've just got one of uh one of them in this particular show but you have many in others so tell us a little bit more about our wonderful guest i'm very so, interested maria garcia is uh, she's phenomenal i actually met her and i love using the word met right because you never actually meet someone in person but uh, met her in a clubhouse room and i want to say that it's mike's room we'll have to ask her but i think it was screw the big room she yes she's nodding and uh mike armstrong has this room that uh he gets a lot of people who pass through there during the day but i overheard maria speaking and she's very much into fitness and i think in one of our chats uh, she was actually on her way to the gym to work out and i was envious because i thought oh i want to get back into the gym i haven't been there in, in over a year but she's very much into health and well wellness and fitness yeah yeah and remember this is the underdog show so maria will be sharing a little bit of, about her journey to be one of the fittest ladies from from being uh, a little bit obese to being one of the fittest uh, ladies that, that i know i've seen her instagram photographs it's kind of amazing about her transformation uh, so uh if you uh, are suffering from self-worth and issues like that maria will be sharing how she how she got out of that though those kind of like mind things that were happening to her and developed this this really wonderful personality and we certainly need that in the world now after we've all been uh questioning i guess the way we were living how we're going to be living how we're living now the choices that we're making and and how they affect us so let's bring her out maria garcia welcome to the program yes maria look at you young lady i call everyone a young lady they could be much older than me by the way it's just a <laughs> crazy term that i use so Maria, uh, please keep me on point. Am I correct as to the, the room we met in? Was it Mike Armstrong's? It was, it was. In fact, I think all three of us met in Mike's room. So yeah, that's where we all formed a connection in there. Yeah, who did you think was like the sexiest, myself or Dr. J? <laughs> uh, I think Dr. J has it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so well, <laughs> takes the room i mean all the time the green <laughs> you know her, her picture is it <laughs> right now maria uh, we want to play a little bit with your microphone because you're coming uh, in and out a tiny bit so so i actually have a separate microphone uh, which i use it's a yeti microphone so that's why you don't see me with headsets but it picks up the sound uh, a lot um, and then i can attune it I, I, I you seem like you have a similar kind of setup 
Yeah, I actually I'm going to disconnect and see if you can hear me better. Can you hear me better now? Oh, I can hear you much better. Yes, much better, much better. Perfect. And yes, uh, I just want to mention the reason why I have the headphones on is because we have a separate setup to stream to Business Talk Radio. And if I didn't have these on, we wouldn't be able to do that. So I'd love to to ditch the headphones, but that's not an, an option. So anyway, Maria, where are you joining us from today? So I am in Florida uh, in the U.S. So currently I'm in Clearwater, but I live in Bradenton. So it's in the Tampa Beautiful Bay area. area. That place is hot. <laughs> it's very hot. It just got humid about a week ago. And so we're enjoying the nice humidity. <laughs> yeah. In, in the UK, it's, it's quite cold at the moment. It's about 11 degrees or 10 degrees centigrade. So I don't know how to convert that because you guys work in Fahrenheit, don't you? Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's cold. <laughs> It's hot here too. It's hot and muggy. It's mosquito right. season. Oh, well, hooray for the mosquitoes. So Maria, <laughs> let's get into this. Tell us a little bit about your background and, and uh, uh, you know, what, why you felt you were an underdog. Well, I, since I was, I've always had um, self-esteem issues, uh, seeing my body in a certain way uh, in my head. And just talking to myself in a certain way um, took me to the path where I would just not take care of myself and ended up gaining weight um, several times throughout my young life, uh, which didn't help, again, for, for those issues. It just kind of reaffirmed that maybe that, that, that was true. Um, but it wasn't until my early 20s that I had started to get um, working and, and then just let my personal um, self go gained uh, about 60 pounds that first time and uh, just was overweight. I needed to change and uh, I decided to get on, on a program and I was able to, to lose that weight and feel better. So that was my first experience with knowing that I could achieve that goal and that it was possible for, for me to do it. Um, but just like anything, if you don't stay at it, you don't train, you don't make it a way of living or something happens. Uh, in my case, I had a lot of uh, family uh, issues and then I had a lot of uh, just life uh, things that got in the way, again, stopping me from taking care of myself. And this, um, again, took me down a four year path of coming out of depression and coming out of uh, uh, just the issues I was dealing with and really coming into my own personality. And again, I was back at now this I was like 90 pounds overweight. So I was borderline like morbidly obese. Uh, and this all happened right before COVID. And I just said, you know, COVID was my wake up call. I need to, you know, I didn't want to be sick because the statistics were if you had other issues, it was probably why you were going to get sick and, and really not, not make it. So I didn't want to be one of those statistics. <laughs> and uh, I knew I had done it before. I knew I, I have the determination to do it. So I just said, put a date down and, and started to do, to get back on track. Uh, so it's been about a year now, actually. I started in May of May of 20. And so so let's, uh, let, let's um, take you a little bit back because I want to, to understand what got you into that situation in the first place, yeah? Because uh, mm -hmm. you, you said you had some, some issues with the family and, and so on and you didn't like really want to take care of yourself. Can you, can you explain to me what was what was happening? Where, where, where did that start from? Um, yeah, the first time I was I was in my young 20s and I had decided to start my own life, so move out of my house. We, we grew up in a very close um, single parent household with my mother and my sister. And so for me, that first separation was very hard. Um, I took it. I took it in a very hard way. I know they did too, um, but I, I wanted to make that change. And um, so, so what what caused that change? Why why did you want to move out? Was uh, you know, because for me, you know, it's, if I can stay with the family as long as possible, you know, that's like, oh right, I get food made for me, and then <laughs> I can use a washing machine, and and I don't have to pay mortgages and responsibilities and all that kind of stuff. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, no, we, we had moved from one city to another and they decided they were going to move back to the city we were from. And so um, along the way, we had other issues in the background, but that was a major point. They decided to go back to town, to hometown where we were from. And I decided to stay in at that time. It was um, here in St. Pete. Uh, I was working here. I wanted to stay here. And so I did. <laughs> Were you uh, very young at the time? I was I was twenty four. Four. All right. Well, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of pretty pretty stable, I guess. You know, most most uh, uh, young people try to uh, get out at around that age from from under their parents. Uh, so that's a that's a pretty uh, good uh, time. Um, but what uh, what then led you down this path where where you didn't care so much about yourself? Yeah, it was um, it was hard to be I guess, a, a, at the beginning by myself, feeling alone, like I, I didn't have so much support, um, and then just working and getting out of of the routine of taking care of myself. So, not eating healthy, just working and and really not giving myself the time I needed uh, personal personal time. Right. Right, uh, Dr. Gay, please. Yes, yeah. uh, so I was going to say, I, I know, and it's not obviously just with women, but many women, including me, have uh, self-esteem issues. And I think a lot of it is tied to our appearance and definitely to to our, our weight, definitely. I've been obsessed about my weight my entire life. It's constantly always in the back of my mind. And so I'm wondering, you've, you've had this incredible transformation physically, and I'd like to talk about the emotional piece of it. Because many times, even though we transform how we look outside, those feelings that we already had that have been ingrained in us for so long, they're still there. We look different outside, but the inside, we're still stuck somewhere. And I'd love for you to share with us where you are with that. Yes, um, definitely self-esteem issues. Um, growing up, I I was 13 years old and I, you know going through puberty and pretty fast, and that created for me a lot of um, a lot of not a, not just anxiety but um, just how I started to care about what people thought about, and this sort of led me into well, maybe I'm I'm not uh, I shouldn't be looking this way, and so not talking about it, not having somebody to talk about that with me really just kept me in my head about um, how I look and how I and how I felt about how I looked growing up. So that was when I was, you know, 13. And then um, just, again, thinking that I looked a certain way, uh, this took me to actually being uh, obese and, and overweight. Right. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I know it, it's hard sometimes to to bring out things that are so close to us, especially in a public forum. So I appreciate you doing that. We are going to have to take a break and hear from some of our sponsors, but I do want to say hello to some folks. I'm going to say Regina Longo is in the house. Hello. Welcome. Uh, Philip Chan, Marie McGuire, Diane Bame, Maleha Panatsu, and Harvey Jones. So nice to have you with us today. Hey, we're going to hey, everybody. Yay. And we're going to hear from, I always like to play their clip because it's so important, listening to smile, frequency-based music, and also music that is licensed to play in your public forums. Here we go. We'll be right back after this. Brilliant. The music, services, and programs that we offer at Listening to Smile are based off of scientific studies and research, along with our own personal experiences and testimonials from our clients and our affiliates that we work with worldwide. My own personal journey began in around 2010, and I tried to find relief from a chronic illness that I was diagnosed with. And the traditional ways of healing, they tried to fit me in this box, and that didn't work for me so, for so many reasons. And this led me to a self-discovery that I never expected to be so life-changing. Healing is multifaceted. It requires us to really look at our whole selves and to get really honest about what we see. I started to see movement towards recovery when I started to integrate yoga into my life daily. 
When I started to incorporate the music into all aspects of my life, including my yoga practice, my healing completely accelerated. And listening to Smile's music helped me to open my consciousness. I was able to open my eyes to new perspectives and make changes that I needed to make in order to recover. The most noticeable difference that I saw right away, I mean like immediately after listening to my first frequency track, was how much my anxiety stopped, completely stopped. There was such a relief. My mind was actually quiet for the first time in so many years. I felt safe. I felt this comfort and this peace immediately. I continued to listen daily and I found that amazing things were happening inside of me. I felt calmer, I felt happier. I, I felt like I was in this little bubble of peace. Physically, I started to see the changes happening. I started to see the things happening in my body that needed to happen for me to heal from my illness. I felt empowered, I felt hopeful, and something that I hadn't felt in years. This is why we at Listening to Smile integrate yoga and listening to Smile music together. We see such a huge benefit from integrating the music into other modalities of healing. It accelerates these modalities, it steps them up to another level because it works on the brainwave states and the neural pathways in the brain. This is something that is not very easy for us to do alone at home, but the listening to smile music makes that possible. This is where real change happens. This is where the body and the mind sync up and work towards health of the being as a whole. That is true health, and listening to Smile Frequency music will get you there. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the most listened to radio show on the planet. The other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Underdog Show, starring Ben Shai, the Doctor Who of Business, and we are joined today from Florida, from Maria with Maria Garcia, and she's right there. So, so Maria was sharing with us uh, an incredible transformation that she's been through physically. And we were just starting to touch on the emotional component of it. And we'd love to hear more, but you are muted. There we are. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, great. Yay. Yeah. So, you know, uh, when I've seen a lot of uh, younger pictures of, of, of uh, beautiful women like, like yourself, Maria, because you're actually very stunning. But when I look back at some of the child pictures, if you look at mine, I always think I'm, I'm really like, I didn't really like myself. I didn't like looking in the mirror. I hated, you know, being in photographs. Uh, I'm, I don't know whether you were the same uh, in, in that way, but that caused me a lot of self-confidence issues myself. So, um, uh, and, and I think, um, I think girls get it worse. But I could be wrong. Um, uh, Dr. J and Maria, could, perhaps you could help me. Because you know we've had some great, great conversations in in um, in social media, and you're always uh, so smiley and adding so much great value to people, Maria. So, so I'm, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, you, you you've just struck me as someone totally different to to how you're describing your your 13 year old. Yes, definitely. Um, growing up was was great. Um, I was self-conscious a lot, and like you said, uh, taking pictures was not my strong. Um, I did not like to be in front of a camera. I, I, it, I had friends. Uh, I, I didn't really have a lot of friends, so that didn't really help. I had a few friends um, I stuck with, and I just um, I found my comfort in 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 not just food, but books and school. <laughs> so I stuck to that. That's probably why you can add so much value to people because you, you've read so many books, you know so much stuff, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, 
Um, uh, Maria, I'll, I want to ask you a question, something that I struggle with, and I'm sure, that, you know, I, I don't think I'm the only person, but I have this smart scale and it can tell me my body mass index and how much water I'm retaining. So every day, seriously, I look at it and I have like a conversation in my head with myself, like, hello, do I really want to get on you? Because if you, if I gain, you know, more than a pound, I'm going to be upset with myself all day long. So then I don't get weighed. And the rest of the day, I'm thinking, you know what, that's pathetic. You know, you, <laughs> so do you have this kind of struggle <laughs> with the scale or not? Is it just me? I have a smart scale too. And uh, I tell everybody I meet, I said, don't get on the thing. <laughs> it's not about the scale. The scale just gives you information that you can take and use um, to, to help with your nutrition plan. But it doesn't really tell you the truth. Um, the truth is that you want to have a healthier lifestyle, which means, you know, your, your food choice, they're helping you or they're not helping you. They're, they're, they're making you sick. And that's how I um, help people view their nutrition. Uh, the scale is an aid. It just tells you, you know, where you're at at a certain point, but it really doesn't tell you much about how you, um, and so I don't get on it every day, honestly. I, I get on it once a week and that's enough for me <laughs> um, because it can be torturing to not see anything move or move the opposite way you don't want it. But those numbers really don't have anything to do with what's going on uh, on your body. Great point. And I always think to myself, what if you get weighed once a week? What if it's the wrong day? What if you'd gotten weighed the next day? and <laughs> You have lost two pounds, but you got on the day that you gained two pounds. So uh, hello, Philip Chan. And hello, Adam Duval. Nice to have you with us. Yeah, like, um, you know, I, 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 I'm totally out of this, ladies. I don't, I've never had this kind of fear of weight. I've had other self-image issues, but, but it's never a weight thing. So you're kind of educating me a lot. I, I was never afraid of, in fact, if anything, I was always trying to put weight on because I'm so um, underweight and my doctors used to, to complain about this, not complain, but advise me that I should be eating more muscle stuff. Um, yeah, so, so I, this is a whole new world for me. And, and to, to have that kind of, you know, challenge in, in, in your life that uh, you don't feel good enough just because of the, 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 uh, a weight look. I mean, I, I have issues because I, I felt I looked very ugly, you know, uh, nothing to do much with that. So please help me out. This is all well, great information for me. And I'm guessing a lot of our audience who, who suffer a little bit from, from, you know, obesity. And by the way, people, if you can follow Marie Garcia on her Instagram, we'll try and put it up in a bit, you'll see the massive difference because she shows all her before and after pictures in, in what she's uh, done to transform herself. Uh, I have to say, I, I find you beautiful in, in all your pictures, uh, Maria. Uh, but I, I am kind of interested that the, the fear that you have to stand on a scale, both of you, it's like, whoa, you've never had this. Well, I'll share something else with you. Pre-COVID, I would work out, at least I would try to work out at two to three hours every day. And I was a big solid core fan. I miss solid core so much, but I would take one class, then I have to do the second class just because then I go home and ride the bike and all because I wanted to eat something that I knew I shouldn't be eating. So I thought if I did all this exercise then I could eat the cookies because I love chocolate chip cookies. So it's completely dysfunctional thinking. So I think we need to talk a little bit about nutrition. I think nutrition is so important because what you put in your body makes a big difference and you can't work out for three hours every day, right? It's not practical. Definitely, definitely. Um, you can't outwork a bad diet. Um, that, that is a true statement. No matter um, how much you, you exercise, if it's the wrong stuff going in your mouth, then your body's going to show it one way or the other. Um, so yes, you can have a treat. Like Everybody has treats. I have treats uh, once in a while, but um, I make them a treat, right? So I don't do it every day or every other day. I do it like once a week. Um, to treat myself and just reward myself for being good and, and healthier eating and habits uh, the rest of the week. <laughs> Maria, what would you say were some of the things that you had to give up 
in order to, you know, you talk about treats, but you really, it's, it's a whole change of lifestyle. So how, how were you eating and how are you eating now? Well, I, I was eating out a lot, um, a lot of drive throughs um, at that point, it was, I was just putting things in my mouth that were fast. Uh, I wouldn't eat breakfast. I wouldn't, uh, I would just go by the drive throughs pick up breakfast and pick up lunch at a drive through and then pick up food on the way back. So I was really on this, uh, eating out and, and really fast food, um, bad diet. And I was drinking a lot. I was drinking a lot of beer, uh, at a certain point. And so I had to cut out those major things, right? I started with um, the beer and and the and the drive through restaurants, and then adding some good nutrition in there, um, a healthy breakfast, and then making my lunches. So I personally make most of my lunches um, just so I have control over what I'm eating and not overly having fats and sugars and carbohydrates that are really the cause of the problem um, of many health issues, but the first issue that you see is obesity. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that. I have one follow-up question. No, we can't hear you, Dr. Hear Hill. Dr. Hill. So, so, no, so you're scaring me because you, you sound like you're describing my current life. <laughs> what I, actually, I actually do. Apart from the beer, my, my, my son, when he went to uh, Canada, he used to drink a lot, but no, you know, the age uh, of uh, drinking in the UK is much lower. And he couldn't find anyone to drink with him in Canada. So he stopped drinking beer and he, he just dropped so much weight as, as just that, just the whole alcohol thing just helped him so much to, to be incredibly fit. Um, so I get that, but I, I feel really bad because I don't, I don't eat all the fast food, the, the, the burgers and stuff, but I, I go and, you know, I have a Chinese or a curry takeaway and these kinds of things. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think I, I, I there in London, but here, everything you picked up is, is so saturated of fats and sugars and salts. So everything is overly done here. Um, it's hard to find something healthier. The healthier trends are coming in town, so there's more available um, sorts like sources of choices you have, but they're far and yeah, they're they're far and yeah, I, I get it because when I was uh, trying to eat healthily in in in, um, in the states because I, I was suffering from gout at one stage, and I needed to find uh, food that didn't have a lot of sugar uh, and, and so on, and it was very very difficult. Uh, the, this is how weird the universe is. It put me in a hotel, um, which only so. <laughs> you could only have a meal that had kale in it right and and i hated kale well there was the only because the, the hilton hotel across the road had been fully booked so i was put in this this place and kale is a uh, caused my bloodstream to be alkali right uh, so if i drank alcohol then i i didn't suffer from um um gout which is what i was suffering from at the time really really bad gout and the uh, the kale fixed that but it also fixed um, IBS, because I used to suffer from a lot of IBS, and then suddenly I'm eating kale, and I don't have these problems anymore. That was really weird. So it was yes. fortuitous that it happened that way. Yeah, that's what I mean. The universe always seems to work in, in, in our, for our advantage. Well, one yeah. thing I, I don't know that's talked about that much is, but when you give up something that you're used to having for so long, our body reacts, right? So I think people think if I, if I give up caffeine, for example, you know, I'm going to feel fine. Everything's going to be great. But no, you're probably going to go through some withdrawal process, just like if you give up sugar or you give up salt. What are your thoughts about that, Maria? Yes, uh, definitely. You have to take you have to take it in steps. Um, that is why like our 21 day challenges are amazing because you change one or two things, right? In those 21 days and you're, you're not completely changing everything to where you are craving certain things. So you can still have um, what you like and then start slowly start fading it out of your diet um, because you're, you're so used to, um, certain habits and then your body's also used to having certain uh, nutrients that it's 
conditioned like it your body adapts to whatever you give it so once you start giving it something it's like where did it go and what did you replace it with so it's time for for you to, to make those changes and when you think about making changes one thing that i was told and i've really tried to watch what i'm doing and from a sustainability perspective also but thing food that comes in packages you know, if it comes in a package, there's probably chemicals or oh, preservatives. Oh, 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 <laughs> this guy's a package guy. I can tell over here. <laughs> I need to leave this broadcast. <laughs> yes, definitely. I say anything in a bag and or box is a definite, like, you have to be very careful about what there is in there. Read the labels and then make the choice whether it's going to be healthier for you or if it has too much saturated fats or sugars those added sugars is what really gets it to me and then when they don't do the sugars they add the fats so when they say and then when they say fat free they add the sugars so you get one or the other sugar free is high fats um fat free is sugar <laughs> so you have to be careful even about those that claim healthier they're not really that healthier you're gonna hate me. I had, I had a trifle this size, the whole thing yesterday. Uh, what's a trifle? A trifle. It's it's got uh, uh, whipped cream, oh. jelly, and sponge cake. Uh, but oh. I did mix it with spinach, so I had lots of spinach with it, and that was my, that was my, that was my. <laughs> I'm feeling, I'm feeling really terrible about the whole thing. I did, I did have a problem when I, because I became a vegetarian for a couple of years, and I did have a problem with that diet change, in that um, I lost a lot of energy. So, um, in other words, I, I was falling asleep a lot more than I do today. <laughs> Are uh, you awake right now? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in zombie mode. Um, so, 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 and, and I found that uh, my body couldn't absorb the. Uh, wasn't getting enough B6 and B12. And so I switched, uh, I, I tried to take the tablets, but it wasn't absorbing it. So my nutritionist told me that I needed to go back to having a little bit of meat every so often. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know whether that's, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm saying this. Maria, can I come back to you a little bit? I'm, I'm interested in, in perhaps two or three things. So just going back to the emotional thing, and then we'll come back to the a nutritional program, and I'm pretty sure Dr. J has some adverts that uh, from my yes, our, I know. need to come through. Could it? Uh, could you just share like three things you would share with people to to help them get their emotional self worthiness back up? Um, uh, for them to then take some of the the programs that you 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 advocate uh, more seriously. Yeah. Is it's the quality of life that you want to live. Um, so asking yourself, am I, you know, do I want to be around longer for my family, you have kids or you have, or you have a life ahead of you, you want a better quality of life and do you want to be healthier in those years, um, not be sick as much. And for your emotional side is self that personal time helps you in many ways. Um, once you start taking care of yourself, you're able to take care of others better and you're able to give more because you have to take care of you first and foremost. Um, so those are the things I would share. Really give yourself time to to take care of and your, your body will thank you, but most of uh, your, your mind will thank you. Those changes. I was listening to something yesterday. It said that depression, um, most depression is actually stemmed from a bad nutrition. So just by changing a nutritional basis uh, in your diet can actually help many issues like depression and, and other issues that we suffer um, that we think are, are just normal um, or we've been having to deal with for a long time have a lot to do with our nutrition. So taking care of yourself is very, very important. Wow, Really good you. point. Uh, thank you. I think one thing also that uh, at least I've noticed throughout the course of my life, when I've gotten into these spirals of eating sugar, uh, I'm off sugar again now. This is like week three, yay. But I see it in my skin. 
I see it in my skin. If I eat too much sugar or if I eat too much fat, my skin doesn't look the same. So uh, again, I don't know if that's an isolated, you know, Dr. Jacquelineism or if it affects other people, but uh, we are going to take a break and hear from some of our sponsors. We'd love to hear from you on social media. Are you struggling with any self-esteem issues that are related to your appearance or maybe to your weight or somehow being an underdog? Please put something in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, we're going to take a break and we're going to hear from a couple of our sponsors, starting with MJW Careers. We'll be right back. Have you just lost your job or have been laid off and you are looking to transition to a new job or career? Maybe you have even tried submitting tons of applications and yet you keep getting turned down for jobs you qualify for. Don't wait until you become overwhelmed with rejections when you can easily transition or get your dream job. Let MJW Careers guide you to the right career path and a better, brighter future. At MJW Careers, we know what hiring managers are looking for, and our goal is to land you the job you deserve. What makes MJW Careers a wonderful provider over other services is our pragmatic and scientific approach to resume writing. There are rules, there are visual cues, there are content best practices. We understand those and work within the boundaries to ensure our clients' messaging appeals to the decision makers. Our career consultants will help you transition into new roles quickly and effectively. With our experience in virtually every industry, we will provide direction in the frustrating job market by helping you write a customized, professional resume and prepare you for your interview as well. Join the great number of people we have helped scale up to greater things in their careers. Let us help you on your career journey. Come visit us, www.jobstickers.com, to learn more and grab a free resume review or ebook. The world of healthcare is benefiting us in many ways, but the risk of becoming a victim to an airborne infection is increasing at a fast pace too. There are threats from viruses, allergic pollen, and chemicals which cause you loss of health, income, business, mental health, family, and friends. All are at stake. One solution to this threat are the BV Air Sanitation Passive Base Systems. When you call our team on 0208 104 3253, you find out about the amazing protection available. Protection that uses certified Batterfield tested, standard, and customized air disinfection systems for your personal and business use. Each system uses a filterless technology known as Placide, which attacks all airborne particles with micro lighting to destroy and eliminate viruses and other harmful particles in your office, transport and home. You also benefit from extra bonuses such as low running and maintenance costs, no regular filter and part changes. You get to work with our trained experts and professional staff and be made aware of the latest in airborne protection and disinfection strategy. Keep yourself healthy by working Working with our trained experts and Placide virus killing systems, which keep you safe from airborne viruses. BV Air Sanitation Limited. We save lives, save businesses, and prevent infection. Schedule your free consultancy call and virus protection checklist. Call 0208 104 3253 or connect to us on www.bvbuster.com. It's what we do together that counts. The Bic Alliance story. A true story about faith over adversity, perseverance, and entrepreneurship. Read Earl's story and how he became an entrepreneur. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible.com. For more information, contact Earl Hurd at earlhurd at BicAlliance.com or call 1-800-460-4242. stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. This is the Underdog Show on Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline, and my co-host is Dr. Who of Business, Ben Chai, hey. and guest is Maria Garcia. Welcome back. <laughs> So, Maria, just to, just to recap, just before the, the uh, inter interval just now, 
Um, you had three major, major whys uh, in terms of like uh, to, to give up um, uh, your current eating habits. One is you really wanted to be able to help people, but because of the um, sugar crashes um, and the depressions caused by those sugar crashes, uh, it, it, it made you less effective because you, you, you would be feeling depressed a lot. And that comes to the second thing. If, if you don't want to have those kind of highs, the ups and lows, because I, I know alcohol and sugar is a general a pick me up for lots of people. It's like, oh, yeah, I feel good afterwards. But then they have to suffer the crash afterwards. And, and, and the crash sometimes lasts a bit longer than the high. The high are instances, but then the depressions are much longer. And, and thirdly, um, it's just the your actual health, as, as Dr. Jay was saying, sometimes she feels uh, her skin doesn't feel good. I suffer a lot from um, eczema, so sugar is actually very bad for me. But also uh, a friend of mine uh, did a lot of studies on, on uh, uh, people who had suffered badly from COVID and, and died. And much of that was related to sugar. So there's a lot of heart diseases that are caused by, by, by too much sugar. And, and I think it's di diabetes version type one, I think maybe is sugar related. And a lot of the statistics of those were the people that had suffered a lot from uh, the impact of, uh, of the, the virus. Uh, uh, because the, the high sugar levels was impacting their immunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I, I'm taking from, from, from what you're saying. It was those kind of three, I need to, I want to help all these people and I can't because I'm feeling depressed and, and, and I, I don't feel good about myself. So uh, would that be a good summary? <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely. Um, <laughs> sugar, sugar takes you there. Uh, many people don't realize that sugar does cause a lot of that inflammation in the brain um, to, and carbohydrates essentially turn into sugar. it just all goes back to, to those high sugar uh, and alcohol well, alcohol is a depressant so if, if you were depressed it would just take you you might feel a little bit better but in essence you are actually uh, lowering your your ability to be in the present um, so the high sugar content comes afterwards when your body has to process it and then again, you go through the same cycle, like you were saying. Wow. All right. Well, let's move on to the let's get fit now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and how 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 is it that you know, like like one of my 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 good friends hated running, you know, like always said would never go running, and today because of COVID, just went running a lot and now just can't stop running. And I'm thinking, oh, I hate running, but I go out and try. And even after a while, I just think, oh, you know, I can't be bothered. <laughs> so, so how do you, how do you, what, give us some tips, uh, your nutritional and your, your exercise tips to, to get people into that habit. Yes. So many people, many people want to know what the motivation is and, and how to get motivation. And where does it come from, right? Um, but what we don't realize is motivation starts with motion. You have to move first. <laughs> and then, like you said, once you start doing an activity, I, I always recommend do something that you like, right? If you like to be outside and you like to take a walk, take a walk. If you can jog because your body allows you to, take a jog. If you just need to go on a bike, on a bicycle, uh, take a trip, whatever your form of you know, swimming or tennis or just any activity, but move, just move for at least 30 minutes a day, that will allow you to have that uh, motivation over time. So motivation comes after you get started and, and really just get moving. There's no better way to say it, just move uh, for your physical activity. As far as your nutritional um, is, is just making that conscious decision to take care of yourself and be and be conscious that everything you put in your body is helping you or it's actually making you sick and marie i see you have a button on what does it say oh it says i make the world healthier and happier i love it that's 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 my mission right uh, along with with 
do with Herbalife Nutrition, uh, a global company. Uh, we focus on helping people transition to healthy and active lifestyles by giving them the tools they need to change their lifestyle, learn what good nutrition is all about, and letting them have those results so that they can make changes in their life um, that are going to benefit them. Yeah, I'm sorry about that noise just now, uh, Maria. Uh, that was me opening my fridge to show you my, my spinach. Oh, just good. That I, I, that I don't just eat, um, you know, uh, um, <laughs> bad things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. That's interesting, though, because if you you eat, you had whatever that was, sponge cake with the whipped cream, but you put the spinach on there yeah. too. Is that to mentally feel better about eating it, or I just? Don't to try it? <laughs> I don't know. But back to uh, Maria's uh, point just now. Do you think that also uh, uh, motivational is? It's like some people have pictures of how they want to look and stuff like that. They have these vision boards. Do you think that's like a motivator or demotivator when they don't feel they're looking like that that picture? So I take pictures and, and, and examples as inspiration, um, not motivation, all right? Because motivation comes from within uh, you. Like once you get going and you start to see your results, whether it's that you feel better because you're drinking more water or because you're eating healthy. It's how you feel at the end of the road that gives you the motivation to keep going. But inspiration helps you. Now, in some cases, these pictures might not help certain people. They're not ready mentally to look at them every day. It might actually cause the opposite reaction. So you really have to um, know yourself, know how you think and what you tell yourself about these pictures that you're looking at. I do have pictures, but I don't look at them every day because I don't like to compare myself to these pictures every day, but I measure my, my progress, my personal progress, in three months, every three months, I like to see my, my big progress. But I know that every 21 days, I'm, I have progress. Um, so it's just looking at the longer periods of time gives me the most motivation versus uh, always looking at a goal and comparing myself that I'm not there yet. I can compare myself to where I was three months ago and that gives me a lot more satisfaction than looking ahead uh, and, and, and saying, oh, I'm not there yet. Yeah, I, I think that's a really wise, wise advice. What about, you know, like your badge? If, if you have words on, um, you know, just words that on, on your walls or your fridge or whatever it is that's, uh, that says, hey, uh, eat healthy or have you eaten your five a day, or, you know, your five vegetables or time for a run, you know, those kinds of messages that are now constantly in your head do you, what do you think of that yes you have to train uh you have to train yourself to, to think a certain way to have a certain um schedule so it's all about training it's all about timing so if uh, if you are trying to get somewhere you have to make some changes uh and so for example i'm on my last stretch to get to my goal and i have to make changes to train more uh, so I'll get up earlier, I'll pack my lunch, I have my schedule set for when I eat my breakfast, my snacks, my lunch, and just have my hourly increments uh, because having um, a routine actually helps your body. Your body knows when you're going to give it food, knows that you're going to give it enough water, and the exercise is just going to be in there also as part of your training so that no matter what you do, it's just going to be a part of your life, like a part of your everyday life. A question I have for you, Maria, when it comes to water consumption, because I've heard this both ways. So is it just as important to drink pure, just water, or can you drink other drinks that have water components in them? So in other words, iced tea, for example, that, you know, you mix it with water, things like that, or should it just be plain water so the the water intake is is very important so everybody should at least have half of their body weight in water uh, as a minimum but that doesn't include like if you do activities uh, or anything else but the thing I say is your diet so what foods you eat 
should also include water. Like they should be water, more loaded with water. So fruits and vegetables usually contain 60 to 70% water. So you drink water and eat fruits and vegetables, you're actually still giving your body water, but not with minerals and phytonutrients and the micronutrients, uh, as well as the macro. But the micro come from all your vegetables and the water inside those vegetables is actually better for you than just regular plain water. Right. Interesting. So and I'm just wondering, uh, when you're planning out your day, do you include sponge cake in what it is you're planning on eating? <laughs> Doctor Who. I'm mixing it with spinach. <laughs> Doctor Who ate jelly with I, fish fingers. Come on. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just envious, that's all. And so I'm going to take away um, three I things I've learned. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, I'm just going to take away three things that um, Maria's uh, shared so far in terms of nutrition uh, and exercise. And, and one is to to move at least 30 minutes a day, like go for a walk. Um, what about if I just walk around in circles in my house is it, I, it would, would, <laughs> uh, for 30 minutes? Is it, I, I don't know whether that would, would count. But, but uh, Can I tell one. you, during COVID, I did that. I walked two or three miles when I was in Cherry Hill, my apartment. I just, I walked all around and I had little hand weights and uh, that helped because I couldn't get outside. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, walk for at least 30 minutes or do movement. So swimming for 30 minutes, bicycling for 30 minutes, just do anything i think that also helps you you know uh, clear your head especially if it's been you're stuck in a stuffy place the second thing i'm hearing is uh, what have at least two mugs of water is it is, was that correct because I, I know people say have um, five liters or seven liters or nine liters what was it it was nine liters i tried that once and i ended up spending most of the time awake and you know rushing to the toilet at night you know because i, I couldn't hold that. So I, I thought this isn't really clever for me. <laughs> would, would no, that, would... Half of your body weight in as well. Um, but at least like one cup of water an hour. So eight ounces uh, of water an hour is a minimum throughout when you're awake. And just make sure you one put an alarm. Cup of water an hour. Mm -hmm. oh, I, you better I get busy, think. Doctor Who. I can do that. I'm just going to open another cupboard somewhere and. <laughs> what, what if I have a? What if I have a little cup? Would that be all right? Because because that other cup is massive. I I would I would be drowned. You would. Need, that's a poor, That's a oh, seriously. Look at that. It's like that's you see. He's, that's not he's, even. That's not even enough. By the way, it's half your body weight. What? Every, in water, you have to drink half your body weight in water every day. Half my body weight in water. Half my body. That's a lot of water. It is. Yeah, I mean, who actually does that? Come on, seriously. I do. I do. <laughs> okay, yeah. how often do you end up in the restroom? Uh, after I get not, not too, not too much. And I don't drink caffeine either. So caffeine is also a contributor for you to be in the bathroom a little bit more. Mm. For sure. I, for years, I was addicted to diet lemon Snapple, and I would have one or two of them a day. I loved it. And I went to the get a physical, and the doctor said, do you realize how much caffeine is in there? So this December was two years since I've had caffeine, and it, I don't even miss it. All right. So, mm -hmm. so we've got exercise, 30 minutes a day, a cup of water a day. And uh, what's the last thing? <laughs> not a cup of water go ahead <laughs> maria <laughs> uh, just make sure you take care of yourself give yourself personal time and and think about think about everything you put in your body it's just helping you or hurting you and and that that right there will make you more conscious of everything you you, you do um, because you want to take care of yourself to be around not just longer, but healthier while you're here. Um, because the, many people today suffer just for long periods of time with these illnesses when they don't have to be sick all this time. They could be living normal, healthier lives until they get 
older and those last few years are gone, but not 30 years of illness is too much. For me, it's too much. So I'd rather only have three years of illness when I'm really old than 30 years before I even uh, get to enjoy those, those last 30 years of my life. Thank you so much. So, that, take care of yourself. Uh, yeah, that's a really good point. Thank you. Have have um, at least have the great habits, or, or have thirty terrible years of, of health. I, I get it. I will. And I have heard guilty for the rest of my life. <laughs> I have heard coaches say that if you want to have a tree, you want to treat yourself. Make sure that it's not something that's the norm. It's, you know, once in a while, maybe it's once a week, but it's not where your behavior pattern includes it all the time. We've got another comment from Philip. Anything you can do to raise your heartbeat to 120 minutes, uh, beats per minute for 20 minutes each day is good. You choose your activities. Thank you, yes. Philip. And we, uh, we had another message from Bobby Hang that, that, that just said, um, Hang, yes. Uh, the quality, the quality of, of water is key. Uh, yeah. Bobby's going to be on our show this evening at uh, in the name of love. So welcome, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Spring water is definitely water, um, but your fruits and vegetables are. Awesome. Yeah. Well, one last question be, be, before um, you, you give us the the outro and some final uh, uh, thoughts, Maria. Um, tap water. Is this, uh, uh, would you recommend tap water versus bottled water? And if it, if bottled water, you know, there's, you can get plastic water, you know, the plastic affects the water in the, the bottle. So would you say a, a, a glass bottle? I, you know, it's, I recommend tap water. Uh, it is just purified uh, water from the plant. So if your local water that comes from the sewer that's purified and back to so if you drink it, you know, make sure you have a good filtering system. But the best water um, comes from the ground, right? So if you can get a good source of spring water, um, it's definitely going to be your best choice. It's hard to get it. Um, so just making sure you have a good filtration system then after you get tap water um, is going to be key to, to making sure you're drinking a little bit better quality of water. Great, great. We should get Swampy to dig us all some uh, wells. Um. Dr. J. We have a friend called Swampy who digs, digs up and creates wells. Um, yeah, well, we're, we're kind of almost at the, the end of the, the show, um, uh, Maria. Uh, Dr. J, would you like to ask um, Maria the last um, question? Yes, so I'd like to ask you, what is next on your journey of wellness? Uh, what is next? So I'm I'm looking forward to doing a half a marathon at the end of the year, December 19th, uh, in Sarasota, and then next year uh, a full marathon. So that takes me on my way to uh, getting uh, an ultra marathon under my wing eventually, probably in a couple of years. <laughs> so that's that's my fitness goals. Um, I, I uh, it's what I like to do. Uh, enjoying something I like to do. And that, that's I look forward to. Well, that's very exciting. And Maria, while we still have you spotlighted, would you please share your contact information for people who are listening on the radio? How can they get in touch with you? Yeah, definitely. You can um, contact me on my Instagram. It's Maria24FitForLife. Uh, also on Facebook, uh, you can look me up as Maria uh, Garcia. I also have a page. I'm Maria 24 fit for life um, connected to my Instagram. You also have my phone number here uh, as 941-879-4086. Uh, you can reach out to my email also um, and let me know if you have any questions. Um, so yeah, the best way to contact me is Instagram. I have a link there, a link tree uh, where you can click and send me messages. Um, that's that's great. So so everyone, Maria Garcia is spelled M A R I A G A R C I A. That's for the people who are uh, audio only. And um, uh, please do follow Maria because I, you know I've seen a lot of her Instagram photos and her transformation is amazing. 
Uh, and, you know, if she's having a bad day, she'll be honest about it. It's not like one, one of these kind of like, hey, every day is a great day and I, I've, I've, I've removed 500 more pounds off of me. So she's very honest. Uh, and the things that she shares uh, is helping people all around the world. Uh, even though I'm joking about eating large trifles, actually that was the only trifle I've had in, in about six or seven years. And, and I have actually taken some of Maria's uh, advice just by watching her, her Instagram. So do reach out to her and, and perhaps uh, if you want to engage with her on uh, from a personal coach, I'm sure she'd love that. Yes, thank you, Maria, for being here. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you over on Clubhouse. So don't forget to follow Maria on Clubhouse as well. Yay. Um, Dr. Who, before we go, we have a, another show coming up, which is the business show. Uh, Alcini is on vacation, and you've brought us a wonderful guest. Uh, do you want to just tee up a little bit about our guest for the 2 p.m. Eastern slash 7 p.m. British summertime? Sure. Our, our next uh, guest for the business show is a, a guy called... Uh, Michael Pusey. Now, he is amazing because he's built a business uh, which has been very profitable. And he thought, you know what? I would really like to help some uh, less privileged people. And he's been working with youths in, in parts of London to, to get out of the, the slums. And, by do, and the way he's done it is by creating these, uh, a BMX track. Now, a BMX is a bike, right? And many of the people that he's helped are actually representing the UK in the beer in Olympics for the BMX world. So we'll be sharing how he did it and how then he used his finance to actually give back to society. Absolutely incredible story. That is brilliant. Thank you again for bringing him to the program. Looking forward to it. So we're going to sign off now. We hope that you'll join us in just under one hour right here, whatever channel you're watching us on. We will be live streaming on Business Talk Radio, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch TV. Uh, that's all for today. That's a wrap. Thank you, audience, so much for joining in. And please, as always, uh, uh, if you do enjoy our shows, share share it with other people, and most importantly, do comment uh, on it and, and let uh, Dr. J and myself uh, know what you liked about it. Let us know what you don't like about it, and and the kinds of kind of uh, things that you, perhaps you you would find more interesting to watch in terms of challenges that people have overcome. Wonderful. Thank you again. We'll see you shortly. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.